Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Oh, there's going to be job losses. No, there isn't. Sunlit Uplands, Project Fear, shut up, sit down. What do experts know? And now they're both coming out and saying, yeah, businesses going bust is a price worth paying. One does it with a heavy heart, one does it with a spring in his step because he is a borderline sociopath who doesn't actually care about anybody. Hunt's got a double figure, millions of pounds in the bank, which is great. I, I'm not one of those people who believes in more equality somehow involving massive confiscations of wealth from the wealthiest but it does somehow disqualify him from saying 350 people at a car wheel factory in Cookley are going to lose their jobs but it's worth it I wonder if any of them would care to give me a call this morning 10.27 is the time Steve's in Dewsbury Steve what, what do you think's happening? <laughs> Hi, but I'm a technologist. I work in, in um, upcoming technologies. And I can say that things that are going on in Britain um, waiting to come in, businesses that are ready, are quite significant. And I think the job losses are inevitable due to AI being introduced into, into the workplace no, anyway. No, the job losses and we're talking about today have nothing to do with AI. The, 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 the uh, chief I mean executive of the company... Well, we're not talking in general about theoretical, fictional businesses. We're talking about production lines that when the product at the end of the production line is subjected to export tariffs will not be financially viable anymore now did you vote for that um i, I voted to leave um, yes i, I, I could tell that already but did you vote for businesses to go bust um to actually say you are going to go bust and you are not going to go bust, yes it's hard to say which who's going to cherry pick there are going no, to be no you misunderstood me again steve jeremy hunt is saying businesses will go bust as a direct consequence and, of a no deal and, brexit if there wasn't the a no if there wasn't what i'm saying is is that businesses will be there are new businesses coming up that aren't yet there right. that will be there when we're out for example Great. so no not for example not for example i hope you're right and i I'm happy to believe you, but we're not talking about a fictional, a theoretical future today. We're talking about... We're not. A, we're, not. We're, talking about we're talking about technologies that are existing yes, that can't a, a get into the marketplace future. because we're in Europe. Right. Go on. Well, then tell me well, about the technologies too, that can't get... Go on. Tell me about the technologies. Yes, which is why today we're talking about the present. So, okay, so tell me about the technologies right that you can't get... China right now, yes. and everybody lives on their phone. Everybody. Everything that is in your wallet right now will be on your mobile phone within five years, and the technology to do that, the digital linking technology, is yeah. British. The patents are British, and that is coming through. So when but we're in the happens, EU. Yeah, but we need to be out of the EU for this technology to be to take precedence because what will happen what is... What does the that money, mean? Just, example, just, the money. just slow down a bit. We need to be out of the EU for this technology to take precedence. Just tell me what that means. Yes. Right, OK. For example, all the cash that is in your... We are going cashless. We are going digital and we're going to go virtual. That is definitely going to happen. The bridging technology that does that is, is British. Now, that company is actually moving from the country because we can't get traction, not because we don't we want to move. We can't where, get where, traction Sorry, what's the, the company called? Um, Smartglyph.com. And where's it's, it moving um, to? Um, well, we're, the investment we've just taken is from America. This is your own business, like is it? This is a business you're involved I, in? I, I'm involved in it, yeah. Right, so yeah. what is it about European is... Union membership that has prevented you from, from doing well, anything? At the, at the moment, what we're saying is, is that should we follow the Norway model, should we not follow the No, Canada, you can't Canada follow model. the Norway model so, so, because yeah, we're not in so, EFTA. So what, so what is it about... We, when your, have please, we ever Steve? been followers? We're a country no, of Steve, leaders. No, Steve, Steve, so you're doing emotion. Leaving? No, here is the question, because you seem... No, I think you know no, more no, about this than I do. What is it about European Union membership that at the moment is restricting your ability to trade? Because you cannot be Switzerland, which is where we should head, without with being in the EU. EU. You need to be independent to control. Yes, I'm going to ask you once now, more. Because, I'm going to ask you once more. Switzerland, so, of course, so, so is in. Look, what it, what, what is it about membership? That, no, please, Steve. What is it about membership? Just, just tell me, because I'm happy to okay. believe you that that Our restricts that restricts your ability to do business. Right, the reason Switzerland is Switzerland and is not in the EU is because it needs to stand independent uh, when it comes to money. Can you just please answer so, the question? Well, I'm trying to answer what it in the way What can't you that, do? Okay, 
what by being a me- by being a member you can't stand independent and say we hold the purse we're the prize which is what Switzerland no, does right what, what, what does that mean is, is what can't moment, you do at the moment? We can't hold the purse. That's utterly meaningless. What 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 is it you can't do? And you know that the EU is just set you can't stand you can't stand independent. You cannot stand oh, on your and say right. Oh. We are the prize. Let's say for example, in in Docklands we've got the strongest IT infrastructure in the world. As members GCHQ of the EU. The yes. Well, irrespective, it is no. A it's not irrespective, got, is it? Because we wouldn't it, have that is, unless we had island. a membership of the biggest trading block in the world. Once it's, more, no, it's Steve. The internet, and it's Steve, not the biggest trading block. It's the second. It's the, Steve, second it's the biggest, biggest mate. Block. Steve, one question for you. All right, what yeah. your business? What can't you do today that you'll be able to do when we leave with no deal? Because if we leave with no deal, we're not going to be anything like Switzerland. We can. Well, that, what my argument is is we need. I don't to want be your like arguments. I want your ind- points. I want your evidence. What can't you do? In a nutshell, using your expertise of which I have none. You've got me right over a barrel here. I know nothing about this sector. What can't you do today that you'll be able to do in November if we leave with no deal? Stand independently as, as for example, the central bank, as Britain being the central bank for the world. If we're the central bank for the world, we cannot have partisan relationships with other Mate, you're, places you're, in Europe. You work for a technology company. You, you're not going to be able to establish Britain as the central bank for the world. Tell me about your company well, and what, what no, no what Steve, yes, what can't can. you do today that you'll be able to do in November? Just as a simple business proposal, fill your boots. Stand independently oh, without being authoritarian. Stand independently. That doesn't mean anything at all. And here's a, the first story that will pop up on your Google about Switzerland and EU. Relationships between non-EU Switzerland and its 28 EU neighbours were strained on Sunday with the European Union threatening from midnight to terminate its preferential treatment of Swiss stock exchanges. Um, Steve, how is that standing independently? Right, so, so p- partly, if we stand back and say, okay... You've got to answer to one question that money. I've asked. You've got to answer one it, question that I've asked. Yeah, How is the so, EU okay, being able... Question, no, mate, I we... give up. Seriously, have a great day. It's 10.34. Mark's in Peterborough. Mark, what would you like to say? I'd like to say, James, you're coming at this from a, a totally wrong angle. You're Come coming on. from it from, with uh, figures, business, money, that type of... That type that, that that you're coming from that angle, right? And you're going to come yeah. at it from the feelings angle. No, no. Okay. I'm not coming from it from feelings angle. So what, what, I'm what's, coming what's, from it from what, a people's angle. Yes, a but, but, people's but angle, what's the opposite right? of facts? The people, right? Yes. In Northern Ireland, right? I'll give you. I'll give you a simple a simplification. A nationalist Republican in Belfast, right? Yes. Has more in common with a loyalist unionist in Belfast than he has. From a poli- from from anybody. Yes, I, in I, I wasn't a pejorative I same, when I said feelings. I, I didn't mean it as a criticism. Yes, and so they the feel the same. Unionists. You're telling me that we they feel. More... Stop talking for a minute. You're telling me right. that they feel the same. I, I agree with you. That's why I said feelings. No, they don't. They have right. the oh. same outlook. It's not feelings. What, what is the it? The same then? outlook, and and the outlook is that we came through a thirty-year conflict, right? Yes. And the thing was that the work that was put into that resolution of that yes has nothing the only thing that the i come from near the border right yes i'm a unionist that comes from near the border i had 22 members of my family and my friends murdered in that conflict right? yes i can tell you something now that was a hard one piece right and if the european union insists on gathering its tariffs to compromise that peace, then the problem lies with the European Union, not with the people of Northern Ireland of whatever persuasion they come from. Right. I, 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 I think I understand what you're saying. My, my apologies in advance if I don't. But, you, you, I mean, you can't just say you're, 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 you're talking about laws, James, as if I shouldn't be. I, I mean, this is what it is all about. It's about rules yes. and laws that apply currently yes. equally... Yes. In Northern Ireland and Ireland, we we have decided, yes. the British people have decided yeah. that we want to have different rules and laws now. We don't want to be in the yes. customs union or the single market. Mm-hmm. And the the Good Friday Agreement stipulates or or certainly yeah. rests upon the insistence that you have to have the same laws applying across the whole island. So yeah. just but unravel rules, unravel rules. that for me. Rules and laws are made by men and women, right? 
right? They're not set in stone and concrete. They can be flexible. Well, the Good Friday they Agreement can be changed. is. They can be moved. The Good Friday, the Good Friday says, the, the fundamental part of the Good Friday, which I study, supported and signed yes. uh, on behalf of loyalist paramilitaries, right? The Good Friday states that it's consent. Everything's by consent. So it's no matter what the European Union states in its laws, it's about the consent of the people of Ireland. No, no, no. The, the, the consent clause is about what would happen in, in, in the event of a, a vote on, yeah. on reunification. Let me take well, you back to the yeah, question you're that... Just saying, you're saying that the European Union... I, I am going to insist on, on getting an answer to can, the question that I've asked. Right, can't create, can't create no. a united unification of Ireland. Yeah. Well, it can't. No, I haven't the said that. Can you see? Unification of Ireland no, let's have a conversation about things that have happened and been said, OK? So here, here right. is the problem, right? Well, the, yeah. the Good Friday Agreement states <laughs> that it is an agreement between between two members of the European Union. That, 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 that is in the text. Yeah. It isn't anymore. It's going to be an agreement between one member of the European Union... Two sovereign states. And, ...and another country. And it is... Two sovereign states. Yes, I, I just pay attention, mate, because yeah. I think you might be able to help me with this, because at the moment, you, yeah. you're, you're, you're... I mean, you've come on and you said, I've got not understood it, but this is where I need your help. Because yeah. at the moment, it is absolutely inarguable that a requirement of the Good Friday Agreement is no difference in, just for the sake of trade, I mean, there's loads and loads of other stuff as well, but you have to obey, if you're selling fish, or you're selling milk, or you're selling mm -hmm. uh, almost any other product, I think there might be some divergence on fuel, but you have to obey the same rules, right? Yeah. yeah and now we moment. are, no, no, you see, I haven't even begun to get close to finishing. Go on. Go on. So we are now, as Britain, saying we don't want to abide by those rules anymore, and the Good Friday Agreement says you have to abide by the same rules on both in both parts of Ireland. Just <coughs> explain to me how that works. How can we how can we abide by as British people different rules, while at uh -huh. the same time abiding by the same rules, Mark? Well, the, the, the Good Friday Agreement is an, an international agreement. It's not a European Union really, agreement. Just, just, just focus in. No, of course it isn't a European so Union two, agreement. But just, no, so just focus in on this question, right. okay? Just calm right. down, because I really well, think you can help I'm, me I'm here. Not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. Yeah, come on. Thank you. What is the question? Well, I've asked it three times now. That's why I keep suggesting right. that you but just I'm, pause well, and let me listen. Answer them. Let me no, answer no, them. No, but let you just asked me what the question is, Mark. You can't answer it unless we're clear. The, the, the question, how, the question uh, that you're saying is how can how can you move how can you move products, move sales, move things? No, 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 no. That's not the question at all. The question is how can you simultaneously have yeah. different rules between the two territories and an agreement yeah. that insists that they abide by the same rules. No, 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 no. It doesn't insist that you're paid by the same rules. It really does. Any, any, any agreement, any agreement, any international agreement, right, is always flexible to change, right? No, They're no, between, it really isn't. That, that's yeah, what no, a treaty it really, is. It really is. All international agreements, right, are subject I'm, I'm to change, I'm just once right? more, I'm going to ask you again, because that's not true. I mean, the whole point about writing oh, down it is a... true. It is just plenty of international agreements all over the world that have been changed and been flexible. Do you know what I mean? As time moves on, yeah, circumstances okay, so, changes, uh, institutions changes, yeah, governments changes... You're bound to understand that. Yeah, okay, least, let, let, let's pretend that's true. And now let's go yeah. back to the question. How do you have two territories that are bound yeah. by the requirements of an international treaty to operate yeah. under the same rules? How do yes. you keep that treaty intact while having the two signatories to the treaty abiding by different rules, Mark? Well, what you do is you get the two sides together and you have to have the compromise that made the Good Friday Agreement. Right. And a compromise. So you have to change the Good Friday compromise. Agreement. You don't have to. You, you can compromise it and you can... But what do you mean you, when you it, say compromise? Do you mean change the Good Friday no, I Agreement mean, I don't, not, as it not currently not stands? Friday, not, not change the Good Friday uh, Agreement fundamentally, but you can put in changes. The Good so Friday what change was would you put in then? As a flexible, it was always stated as a flexible agreement. No, it because, really wasn't, though. But, but, oh, yes, it really was, because the consent of the people... You can keep saying that, but you must answer my question at some people point. The underlines the Good Friday Agreement. Yeah. Tony Blair wrote a, wrote a card and put it on billboards around Belfast. Yes, but that, the that's the consent of the people of whether agreement. they want it or not, Mark. Not whether or not they're going to change it. So you just said you want to change it, but you don't want to change it. No. The, agreement, the Good Friday Agreement has... 
there's, there has been changes through the Good Friday Agreement. For, for instance, the Good Friday Agreement was a Good Friday Agreement. Then became the Belfast Agreement. Right? No, it's, no, no, it's both. In. It's, 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 it's yeah, the yeah, Belfast yeah. Agreement. Its uh, nickname uh, uh, is the Good Friday Agreement. No. That wasn't then a change go, in the then name. Then to go to St Andrews. Mark, I'm going to have to, 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 mate, I'm gonna have to go. I, don't, I honestly well, I can't... One thing, James. I'll tell you one thing, James. They'll never be united in Ireland as long as I live. Yeah, but that's feelings, you see. And we began this whole conversation with me saying... As I understand the rules and the facts and the laws, this is happening. You said you've misunderstood it because you're talking about rules, facts and laws. I said it's all about feelings and that... You're just awful, mate. You just, you've got to listen. To, you've got to listen because it doesn't matter how deeply you believe something. If you can't answer the question I've asked, you've wasted everybody's time. David's in Glasgow. David, what would you like to say? Um, hi, good morning. Um, I wanted to point out that... Um, Immediately after the EU vote back in 2016, the SNP were calling for a referendum back then. I mean, this is actually something that's not particularly new. Yes. Um, well, it's their raison d'etre. I think we all forget that sometimes south of, of the border. It, 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 this, the SNP might be the party of government in Holyrood, but it exists to pursue Scottish independence. Of course, yes. I mean, I, I don't understand that. But at the same time, we only had a vote in 2014. Um, in the 2017 general election, actually, the SNP were pushing this pretty hard, and they lost about 30 percent of the seats on it. Yes, but I, 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 I don't know if you missed a little bit of the introduction. This is this entire question is contingent upon a no deal Brexit happening, which changes yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah, I mean, I do understand that, but again, I'm I'm confused by this because only about nine percent of uh, Scottish businesses actually export t to the EU. Um, so we have to think yeah, really carefully. I, I about need to clarify that for you because this is a figure that I've heard been doing the rounds with a lot of um, uh, anti-EU people. It doesn't matter what percentage of businesses export to the EU. You need to look at what percentage of exports go to the EU. So it's a relatively small number of companies That's doing right. the massive majority of business. So nine percent of companies export to the EU. Oh, what, perce what percentage of exports go to the EU? Well. The figure I was actually quoting to you, um, the fine detail on it, I don't actually have. Yeah, but think about how important this fine detail is, David, because someone, oh, someone I, sold you a pup here, mate. 9%. Well, listen, what if there's only one business? You see, 9% oh, of businesses export to the EU, but in the context of the UK, it's about 80% of exports, or six, between 60, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's well over 50%. So that 9% figure is not only meaningless, it's dangerously ignorant. No, no, no. I, mean, I, I do understand all that. I mean, I'm, I'm not coming... I so then tell me what percentage of exports go to the EU from Scotland, including, of course, at the moment, England. Uh, sorry, I missed the question. Say that again. What sorry, percentage you... of Scottish exports go to the EU? Well, all I have here is... is that yeah, that's figure, why so they've only given you... Because wherever you've got that figure from, it is designed to mislead was, you in the way was, that it has, you see. It was, it was the BBC way. <laughs> yes, because the businesses, 9% of businesses, you need to know what percentage of, of course, exports. Yes. Yeah, well, let's do it. Let's Google it now. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I've not got a computer me. I'm really sorry. It's all right, I'll do it. What percentage of Scottish exports go to the EU? Exports to the rest of the UK accounted for 60% of this overall total, so already we've blown 9% out of the water. £5.5 billion pounds worth of exports from Scotland go to America, um, so that won't change necessarily. Export destination, of which EU. So in 2017, £32.4 billion pounds worth of exports internationally, of which £14.9 billion went to... Um, EU countries. 81 point... Uh, crikey, if you include the UK, you're looking at 48.9 billion. Okay, okay. So 9% is utterly meaningless. Do you see why? Of course, yes. Yes. So but why did you mention it? Because that, that was the figure that I had from the uh, BBC. And, and, and that, is, that is why it is so important to dig deeper into these statistics. Because the UK exports to the EU is, is a similarly small number. And you hear them saying it, only X percent of UK businesses actually export to the EU. Because most businesses, you know, a sandwich shop, whereabouts in Glasgow are you at the moment? It's a, a sandwich shop on, uh, on the high street is a business. That doesn't export to the EU. But what's the bigger employer, the car industry or the sandwich shop industry? These are the... These are the things that are beginning to frustrate me now because people should be pointing this stuff out and they're not and decent people like David end up on national radio talking twaddle. And Kay is next in Camberwell. What do you think Kay? Um, I, I think it was disgusting. Um, 
Britain chose to be part of the European Union. It was a choice. There is no similarity between any of the groups that she's mentioned. Oppression is not what it is. It, you might as well say it's a spoiled child who just doesn't like what, what now the outcome of the decisions and the choices that they've made. They now want to come out of it. And I think it was disgusting. I think it shows a level of ignorance and a level of disregard for all the history that she's brought up. It's like, oh, they were just being, they were just throwing, you know, they just didn't get what they want. So, you know, we've oppressed them. We're just going to use it. No, it wasn't. My ancestors died. Lots of people died died to stop to, to end it all there was loads it went on for years and this woman has just used it as oh you know it, we're being oppressed no you're not you chose to go into something you don't like the choices that, that you're having to make and you're being a part of now and you want to equate it to that oh she's disgusting she's disgusting she has made britain look awful she's made people of some people who have that mentality she highlighted them she, she's literally drawn a light to the fact that this is how some British people feel and see it. So clearly, the history that every one of those groups that she mentioned, you know, it's, 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 it's not that bad. It's, it's, it's equivalent to... Because when I look at what's going on in Europe and I look at what English making a fuss about, I'm not... Uh, my opinion whether we should leave or stay is of no consequence. The point is that she should never have made the comparison as she did. She could have found something else. All right, Kay, would you, would you stay right there? Uh, don't go away. I want to bring Paul into the conversation. Paul, what do you think of what you heard? Hello, Eddie. Hi. Uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm of the opposite view. Um, I do, I, I'm struggling to understand what, what Anne Whittacombe has said um, that's factually incorrect or that's upsetting so many people about slavery. Well, you just yes, heard Kay mentioned... explain why Kay found it offensive. Yes, please. Well, you just heard Kay explain. Yeah, yeah but uh, again, um, what part, how did she... How did she mention Africa? Did she mention African slavery? Did she, did she, she mention a Pacific what continent? What is slavery? What is slavery? What is With slavery? Every, every, every civilization throughout history has had slavery at some point in its did time. Did it last as long as, as African slavery, the enslavement, or it's not even really the enslavement because black Africans were taken and relocated. Well, yeah, the Africans it, have it, been it, enslaved. So there you go. For, 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 so for, so for when you say that, is it years. the same? Um, so it, from so the is Middle it the East same? to the West. Is, is, I mean, that, is that what's happening to Britain? Are people being killed to try to leave the EU? Are people being murdered? Are, are people, is there freedom no, fighting no, no, going on to try and what, leave Europe? But there's been taken she used an example. She used it, and we have to look at the whole context of what she used. People were exactly. just, slavery went on exactly. to two grandparents. Please, a hundred please odd look years, at it in yeah? context. All right, Paul. No, exactly. So therefore, the example she used is not appropriate. All right. Because okay. my ancestors died. My ancestors left, were taken from Africa and taken across how many miles away i don't know my real family's name i don't know my real family's tree and you're telling me that's equal to what's going on no, in britain no, and, and what they're well, paul, you, paul, you, you tell us you one second one second Kay. Uh, paul tell us what you are saying uh, well basically i'll just i i, I feel that Anne Whittacombe um, has said nothing wrong. If it's taken into context, um, exactly what she said, she wasn't mentioning Pacific um, black African slavery. She, she was just generalising slavery in general. Oppressed people will rise up against the oppressors, uh, same as the African nations. And in what way uh, is the UK's relationship with the EU like slavery? Well, <laughs> in many ways, our, our laws are, aren't, aren't governed by us. Uh, yes, we have some Mickey Mouse elections where we elect our prime ministers that seem to have no, and, and parliament that seem to have very little power oh, come um, on, when it comes to the EU. Come on. Well, well, you tell me. I mean, well, I'm, you're, dismissing, I'm you're, you're dismissing general elections that take place in this country. And yeah, you're saying we've well, no control over any of our laws? That that's that's simply not true. Well, we have we have a, a, a certain a certain level of control over our laws. So, in what ways I mean, is it like slavery? We have to accept so many laws from the EU that that really isn't relevant to us. Well, um, well, well, well. Again, coming back to the point um, that Anne Whittacombe and Cave made. I mean, we've we agreed to that in 1975. Now, there's there's dispute well, no, about whether people think, knew what well, they were doing. I'm but the point is, this is not so, slavery, is it? Well, no. It's no. not slavery. And that's but what's she, causing offence. In the context, but that's in the context of what she was saying. It, it, she was just mentioning that the oppressed, and we feel oppressed. She wasn't mentioning the oppressed. She was talking about slaves against their the owners. The oppressed. 
No, she mentioned it is in, in a context. Uh, People and turning on their oppressors, slaves stuff. against their owners. And, and, and you've, I, agreed, I, you've agreed that the, the UK's relationship with the EU is not like slavery. Well, no, not as in the slavery that, that, that we imagined. People in chains, in, in rows, God forbid. But um, it, it's, it's slavery uh, as in we can't, we can't dictate our own rules. We can't dictate which direction... But we're part of the decision-making process. We're part of a sinking ship. And we're we part of the decision-making process. Well, yes. Yeah. Right, I mean, loosely, so it's not slavery. I mean, as, as Anne highlighted... It's not slavery, is it? Uh, ...with her speech... Uh, the, 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 the democracy within within those walls is, is, is laughable. Um, so you know, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, I'm just Jay Bloggs off the street, mate, and we all we all speak the same. I'm a lorry driver. I travel length and breadth to the country, and all I hear is people's just had enough of the EU. They've had enough of this Mickey. Oh, and, and, and you know, and, that's Paul. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I mean, what's mm -hmm. wrong with that view? There's there's nothing wrong with feeling that way, is there? I mean, a lot of people yeah, feel that we, way. We've had a referendum, and people have expressed that view. What we're discussing today is whether you can compare our relationship yeah. with the EU to slavery. Yeah, and that's that's why I've rung up because that's what annoyed me about the the the. the it's it seems to be because uh, the only reason that, that this is all kicked up on the media and the only reason it's kicked up a fuss is because it's an old white lady stood up speaking all posh and, and telling it like it is that's the only reason it's a kicked up what, fuss what does her it, age, it Lamy, uh, gender or the way she MP, speaks got to do with anything and, and, but we're talking about what she said well, not it's, who it's she got is everything to do with it, hasn't it? it and that's based, on what? Feel. based on what Paul? Based on what you said, you, so you lot have raised you lot. That, that, that it's, a, it's a discussion to have that, that she's... Well, she's because she, she made a speech in a public place, the first member of the comment. Brexit party to make a speech in the Parliament. You don't think that's newsworthy? Exactly. And you're jumping away, but it's though she's, she's made a racist comment. And, and not, not I didn't you say that. personally, obviously, the, no. the, I'm generalising the media in general. Um, and and so, I mean, I've got... I've, I'm a white man. I've got a black son. I've, I've, I've got many black friends. I've got uh, all different colour skins of all different colours. You know, but uh, even me, I'm, and, and my friends uh, uh, tell me, it's, it's, the coin is flipped and, and the world, it, and we've gone crazy. We're starting, it's like a witch hunt on anybody and everybody that doesn't agree with somebody. Well, no, well, and, forgive me, Paul, but, but this, it, is, this, is about, this is about assessing whether the relationship between the UK and the EU is the same as slavery. It's not the world gone mad. It's not anyone flipping. It's looking at the words well, that people use and assessing whether or not they're true. And that's what we're doing this hour. Paul, thank you. Kay, thank you. Now, more on what Ad Whitacombe has been saying today at the European Parliament. Adam has called in. Adam, you're very welcome. What do you think? Um, yeah, hello. I was just listening to early, earlier on to yourselves. Hmm. Um, and I was listening to Paul and he had, I thought we had some really relevant points. And then the young lady, I think Kay, I think it was, um, I said a few bits and pieces in there, and I just thought I'll have to phone up. First time I've called, I thought I've got to phone up, say a few little bits and pieces because some things I, I hear these things, and you think oh, I should say something. Yes, you should. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, in terms of the thing that seems to be the most troublesome thing for most people is the use of the word slavery. And first of all, slavery is not owned by Africans. It's not owned by Black people. Slavery is, as Paul said, is worldwide. Every civilization's had it. There are. Uh, countries in the world at the moment that still have it not in the west um, we, we, we banned it and got rid of it years ago um, but it, it, it's this push for relativism of it is almost like well you can't use the word slavery because it's not exactly the same as a different type of slavery but okay what, what, what does slavery mean well it's sub being subservient to something or someone against your will and there was another uh, person texting, I believe, hmm. and said, uh, you know, well, we, we joined. We joined in 1973. No, we didn't join in 1973. We joined the EEC in 1973. And that wasn't, that was about trade. People should know this. Um, and then it sort of developed into this political union, which I didn't vote for. Nobody, nobody's had a chance to vote for. No, so it, it's, the EU has changed from what it was originally proposed to the British people as into something else. But what we've seen in the last 25 years, since 1950, has been the creation of a new organization, the community, the European community. And I'm somewhat sad that it's still apparent that those who have spoken so passionately against this motion tonight have not realized the nature of this new community and its institutions. And first and foremost, that its purpose is a political one. We've been accustomed during these years and all these arguments 
to hear the community described as the common market. I hope this is a habit which we can now abandon. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Certainly the unified market is a matter of enormous significance, but it is only the first step which will carry us well beyond the questions of tariffs and trade, for what we are building is a community, a community whose scope will gradually extend until it covers virtually the whole field of collective human endeavor. I believe that this was the real significance of the summit meeting last autumn. We were able to agree on the guidelines for this progress towards a wider community, a wider community by the end of the decade. We were able to show how in one field after another we could come together as neighbors to achieve by cooperation the many aims which we share and which we could not possibly hope to realize in isolation. And another thing very interesting about that course is, is that the majority of people that voted to join the EEC back in 1973 are the same people, the, now the older generation, that are predominantly voting to leave the EU because they know what it was meant to be and what we were promised it was going to be and now what it has become. Adam, stay right well, there because somebody else who uh, is also a new caller and he's been listening to the hour and wants to uh, have his say is Will. Hello, Will. Where do you stand on this? Hi, yeah. Um, I just want to say two points, actually, because whenever you've asked people like Anne Widdicombe or other callers about how the EU oppresses us, the only answer that anyone's ever given is, well, they make all the laws in the EU. Now, I, I well, what about Adam's earlier. point that nobody in this country voted for the current setup? Well, I mean, well, people haven't. People necessarily haven't, but our government and administration made the decision to, to go along with that and sign the treaty, the Lisbon Treaty and everything else. So it wasn't forced upon us. It hasn't oppressed us. Our government has actively and willingly made that decision, haven't they? What else is on your mind? Um, what I was going to say was, um, what, what I said, when you've, when you've asked people about how the EU oppresses us, the only thing they've said is that the EU makes all the laws for us. Now, I looked this up, and I've got the figures in front of me here. Since 1999, when the figures were released and made public, the EU has passed 2,592 laws. Now, out of that 2,592, Britain... So our representatives in the EU voted along with them, so wanted to pass those laws as well, in 2,466 cases. OK? The only time when our, our representatives in, in the EU voted against all of those 2,592 laws was in 56 times. So 56 out of 2,592. Now, yes, that's still 56 times, OK? But none of those laws were significant and had a, had a massive impact on any of us members of the public in any significant way. Whatsoever. All right, let me bring Adam back into the conversation. What do you think of that argument, Adam? Yeah, well, I should, I, I should imagine that if our elected governments at the time decided that those 56 laws were voting against, regardless of whether they perceived to be particularly important or not. Obviously, they was important enough to vote against uh, compared to the other 2,400-odd. Okay, yeah, well, um, I mean, but you, you can look at what those 56 laws are. And, you know, well, I, I've, got, I've got two examples. If, 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 I, if, I, if, I, if I said to you in this situation, this is where the whole slavery issue comes, I think this is what people get to talk about. Yeah. If I said to you, OK, well, I'll give you one rule, one rule for today, I, nothing else, you can do whatever you want, one rule, you've got to go to bed tonight at 7 o'clock whether you like it or not. It's only one rule. Out of all the thousands that you can decide to you know, conduct your life about, I'm giving you one rule. Well, that's the one rule that, that's going to make the biggest difference to you. Yeah, and I, I think any, any, any democratic nation should be self-governing completely and utterly, and that's it. Right. And yeah, the no, fact no, is, I'll, I'll that take, Germany, take, Germany, has more, Germany has more MEPs in the European Parliament than we do. The EU Commission yeah. is, is, is appointed, it's not elected. Well, I mean, look, yeah, he, he's, you, you, you've got a point in saying, look, the vast majority of times, it, the, 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 the laws the EU pass are laws that we want to pass as well. So the vast majority of times, it doesn't affect us at all. So to say that we're oppressed is a bit, but at least, uh, at best, it's saying that yeah, that's over-exaggerating. At best, is what it's saying. Um, and the, the, the analogy you made about going to bed at 7 o'clock, OK, there might be one, one, one rule or one, one law that we really didn't want that affected us massively. But if you look at those 56 laws, I haven't looked at all 56, if I'm honest, I've looked 
quoted a few examples that have been quoted uh, that I found online. They're, they're minor points. So the main one that would have affected us most was a slight increase in the European Union budget. All right, that's the conversation which will continue in the course of the next hour. My thanks to you, Will, and to you, Adam. Well, remarks today by the new Brexit Party MEP for South West England, Anne Whittacombe. She made her first speech in the European Parliament today. In the week when leaders of member states nominated candidates for the top EU jobs, Anne Whittacombe began by criticising the process and then moving on to compare Brexit to escaping slavery. It's a great honour to speak on behalf of the largest single party in this place. And may I say that I, if I needed any convincing at all, that the best thing for Britain is to leave here as soon as possible. It was the way that those elections were conducted yesterday. Because if that is this place's idea of democracy, then that is a serious betrayal of every country that is represented here. Because it is not democratic at all. And that is just one of many reasons why Britain is right to be leaving this place, hopefully, on Halloween. And it is right because there is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. Well, Guy Verhofstadt, who was mentioned there, uh, tweeted Nigel Farage facing some stiff competition as chief clown of the Brexit party in the European Parliament. By the way, when Whittacombe talks about colonies liberating themselves from the empires, is she really referring to the American Revolution of 1776? The Labour MP, Rosanna Allen Khan, said it was disgusting that Anne Whittacombe would reference slavery and colonisation to describe our relationship with the EU. Her and Farage are bankrolled by elites. She's part of the establishment which has created such a divide in this country. By the way, uh, Nigel Farage with you here on LBC from six. David Lammy, Labour MP, who is black, it's impossible to explain how offensive and ahistorical it is for you to equate my ancestors tearing off their chains with your small-minded nationalist project. Also on Twitter, the philosopher A.C. Grayling responded, Whittacombe is an appalling human being and a stupid one, a living, squawking, histrionic representation in a single spatio-temporal blot of inanity of all that's worst in the Brexit psyche. We're here every weeknight from four, and in our first hour, Anne Whittacombe joined me live to explain her remarks. What I was saying was that history has a pattern of the oppressed turning on oppressors. I quoted slavery. I also quoted the peasants' revolt against the feudal barons. Do you understand why the slavery remark was offensive to people? I also quoted uh, the revolt of colonies against various empires. Those are examples in history of the oppressed rising up against the oppressors. So don't tell me uh, that uh, people can't understand historical examples because I think they're more intelligent than that. Your remarks on slavery have caused offence and I wonder whether you regret that. No, because as far as I was concerned, I was using various, not just slavery, various historical But to use it analogies. at all, if people, to if use it at all, it, it's, uh, forgive me, it's, 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 it's not acceptable, is it, to say I gave other examples, you gave this example, yes, and it's caused it widespread offence? Yes, because it is one of several examples. I'm sorry, the fact that it isn't politically correct even to mention slavery... Uh, it is just a nonsense. You're entitled to take the sweep of history and to take such examples as you want to take. And the only reason to object to it would be if my example was inaccurate. And of course it wasn't. Also with us after four, you heard him trying to interrupt at one point there, Femi Olawoli, the co-founder of Our Future, Our Choice. I don't think it's particularly okay as a country that has been responsible for widespread op- oppression across the globe to then to, to claim that the EU is somehow oppressing us in that specific context, as if the two are comparable. And um, in what way has the EU oppressed the UK by giving us, but by, by allowing us to have a seat at the table, by allowing us to, to, to mingle mingle with our European friends and partners across the channel? It's just a total lack of self-awareness. I mean, if you can compare. The 
the violent oppression. I mean, with the examples she used, uh, the, the rebellion of the, of the peasantry, the ruling classes were literally killing peasants. The examples of, of slavery, again, slavery, in, enslavement and death. And the examples of, of, of colonization, which has often resulted in mass murder. This, the idea that you can compare that to so pooling our sovereignty as 28 sovereign nations in order to have a greater say over the overworld affairs is simply immoral.